Okay, so hi everyone, good afternoon. Um, today I am going to show you how to generate documentation sites with GitHub and Doxify. So before that, there's this question, why are technical documentations important? Who among you here think um, that technical documentations aren't that important at all? Is there anyone? We're gonna fight, I'm just kidding. So <laughs> Um, as a project manager, I've had uh, developers telling me that they'll just work on the tech docs after the sprint in order to meet their deadlines. And as a developer, I honestly feel like it also shows, uh, slows me down sometimes. This scenario is actually known as documentation dilemma. Um, you can Google it. And it, uh, it is where documentations are seen as a symptom of a bottleneck. Personally, one of the things that I learned throughout my time as a tech lead and mentor at Women Who Code Manila was the importance of tech docs. You wouldn't expect that, right? So uh, rather than seeing them as an additional task, I learned to see them as an integral part of what, what, I, what, what I was doing essentially. Uh, because you know, documentation is what will ultimately keep your work alive. Um, in our case, when a new mentor joins and wants to know what we did so far, what we're currently doing, what we'll do in the future, we can simply show him or her the docs. And if a new member joins and wants to work on the past exercises that we did, we can show him or her the docs. And basically, if there's anyone out there who's interested in becoming a part of our study group in any capacity, whether as a participant, as a mentor, as a facilitator, or even as a contributor, you know what to do. We can just show him or her the files and the docs. So this makes us a lot more, sorry, this makes us um, a lot more effective and uh, efficient in what we do. Okay. So now we actually have a GitHub repository for each of the study groups. However, it oftentimes comes as a little intimidating, especially for non-developers. And it's also a bit hard to navigate through the whole repo since we don't have a clear table of contents or some kind of menu which lists where and what these files are for. And so we decided to use GitHub Pages. GitHub Pages provide an amazing way to create static sites fast. You could simply have to push your uh, HTML files to the repository, generate the site through the repo settings, and you're done. So, however, we wanted to make the sites look uniform without exerting a lot of effort. We didn't want to waste uh, time creating HTML, HTML files every time we want to add a new topic. So as mentioned in the Zen of Python, simple is better than complex, and complex is better than complicated. And that's when we started using Doxify. So that's a really cute logo, right? Okay, so um, as per their website, Doxify is a magical documentation site generator. It's simple and lightweight. It doesn't have any statically built HTML files, and all you need are markdown files, .md. And also, it has multiple themes, so that's nice. So, how do we use it? Actually, the best thing about Doxify is that there are just five steps before you can generate a website. So, number one is install Doxify CLI. This is not actually required, so if we're going to be strict about it, it's just four steps. But um, it's recommended because it allows you to initialize and preview your site locally. To do this, just make sure you have Node.js uh, and its package manager npm. So you can download it from their site over there. So that's nodejs.org, download it, install, and you're done. And then to check if you have it installed, uh, just open your terminal or command prompt and enter node space dash v and npm space dash v. Uh, this should display the version numbers of what you've installed. Okay, so now, Onto the installation, just enter this command, npm i doxify dash cli space dash g. And after entering it, you're done. So now we're ready for step two. Uh, you have to initialize the docs subdirectory. To do this, so from your terminal again, 
you just have to go to your project folder. So for example, I wanted to create a documentation site for a particular project. So cd, change directory, space, the path. So that's probably c slash user slash whatever. And then after that, doxify space init. That means doxify initialize space dot slash docs. So this creates a folder named docs and uh, it contains three files. So it has index.html, which is the entry file, readme.md as the home page, and dot no uh, no prevents GitHub pages from ignoring files that begin with an underscore. So this is something, the third file is something that you will need when you start designing your site. Okay, so we can edit the contents later on, but first we'll try to run it locally on our computer. I actually wanted to do a live coding, but you know, everything that can go wrong will go wrong, so. To run your local server, just do doxify space serve space dot slash docs. So it's just doxify serve and ta-da, you have a site. So it says there headline and then an awesome project. And if you want to edit it, just edit the markdown file. So it's really, really simple. And now just push your code to GitHub, that's step four. So create a new repository on GitHub and push it there. I'm assuming that you're already familiar with GitHub, but if you're not, we have docs for that. So, or you can approach me later. And the last step is generate the GitHub page. So just go to the settings and then scroll down a bit. So you will see their GitHub pages and then you click the none and um, select the docs folder and then, oh, sorry, there you go, uh, sorry, here, you will see there that your site is ready to be published at the link. So I actually have a custom domain, that's why it's like that, but usually it's github.io slash uh, whatever your project name is. So there is it, there it is. Um, I actually made like, um, this is a work in progress, so sorry <laughs> for how it looks. And this is like the list of the study groups that we have at Women Who Code Manila. So we actually have 14. So there, and then I'm the tech lead for Python. And when you click on that link, it shows this one. So um, since I have two minutes left, I will show you the site. Okay, so here, ah, sorry. Is it like this? There, so. These are the study groups. When you click on uh, Python, where is it? There you go. So this is how it looks. Um, you have a sub menu here. It lists everything that we did and then all the things that you wanna put in. So it's really very, very convenient because it's very easy to edit and you don't really have to be a pro developer to do this on your own. So it won't take a lot of time. That's it. Thank you. <laughs>